cowboy style of life is just different from, you know, living in a big city and having a suit and tie and, and uh, you know, we're all about Jesus here, but we wear our cowboy hats and our boots. And we have a heart for the youth in college here in Weatherford. We do buck outs and bull rides and team ropings and calf ropings and anything to do with arena events. We have a ride every uh, third Monday night of every month and uh, tonight we're going to just buck some bulls. We're going to have a little word. Uh, the rule is you need to be here by 7 o'clock and then we'd say Jesus paid your fees and, and you get to ride for free. It's just like heaven. If you don't accept Jesus uh, before the gates close, then you don't get in and it's the same thing. We're going to look at uh, Mark, the 10th chapter tonight. Then in the arena, it's simply uh, it's time to just get real. It was a good rush. Get on the next one. We spend time with the kids. We don't just uh, get here and disciple them and, t and preach at them. We work behind the bucking shoots with them. Other than that, uh, it's, it's church. good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons, and we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the Word, it's, Jesus called it the washing of the water of the Word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and, and make use of it. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. I tell you, it's exciting to have young people in the church. The one thing that I hear, and you know, and it's... Uh, It seems like, uh, and we are a church that uh, people are in and out because of uh, their jobs, their uh, traveling. Um, but it's exciting when we have uh, a tablet that keeps telling us the plug-in that you charge it with is wrong. Um, it's nice when we, uh, we have youth. And uh, not just youth, but, but young people. Uh, one of the things I heard, uh, uh, must have been a week before last, because I was here last week. Um, in Meridian, Mississippi, just past Meridian, as you almost into Alabama, um, there's a sign on the road that says, uh, Historic Monument of Simmons and Wright grocery store. And uh, the first time I stopped there, I found out that uh, the Simmons really was part of my family. Um, it was my, uh, my father's grandfather, so my great granddad's brother started the store. And uh, my third cousin runs it. 
Um, and he, uh, he t he's telling me about his church. Uh, they had a church there in town, and he said, you know, pretty soon it just got to be old people. And there was no y young people coming in. And uh, he said, and then we got a pastor that got real discouraged. He was coming from another town. He got real discouraged because there was only about 17 people left. Um, he says, we're, we weren't getting any young people. And so um, he said, we shut the church down. And then uh, his son wanted to get married there. And so his son made sure the church got everything refurbished and stuff. And, and uh, there came along a, a guy that said, uh, we want to rent your church. Um, they had all started going to this, the, the 17 people started going to another church. Um, and uh, they started a ministry there. And this is, an, this is an idea that we have to, this is a, a church that I believe that, one of the things Kathleen and I have prayed for is not only for each one of you and, and your families, but also God send us the people that nobody else wants. And, uh, and we'll love them and, and let them know that you're wanted. You know, and that's not about any of you, but I mean, it's just something we've prayed and, and we've had different people all in and through and we've had people traveling transients that, that come in and out and, and uh, um, they always present a challenge to our safety team because we don't want them to carry a backpack in. Um, but uh, the, where I was going is, is this guy comes to him and he says, we want to rent the church. He says, we've got some um, guys that are ex-cons, and, and, and everybody in church kind of shuns them. And so they started that church, and a, and a, guy, a guy came and volunteered to, to be the pastor. They said, we've got a guy that's going to be the pastor, and said, uh, this is about, to me, this is about how to make a church grow, because we welcome everybody. Jesus welcomes everybody. And he said, uh, they started with three people. He said, they're running about 78 or, or 80 of them every week now. And the church has just kept growing and growing and growing. And, and not all of them are, are ex-cons. Um, there's uh, bikers that have started coming. There's people from town that have started coming because... They started a church that accepted everybody. And I, I think that's a, a message to us in, in knowing how much God loves us. I was listening this morning to, uh, and, and I've shared this before, I, I listened to uh, Bluegrass Station in the morning because uh, on Bluegrass Junction, they play uh, gospel music, a lot of of. Uh, Ah, uh, Bill Monroe and stuff like that, and they, and and it, and one of them that came on today, really inspired me, and it and it it made me think. It happened to be the one that I've listened to just as I came down the access road. Um, it was Ricky Skaggs, but he started with Billy Graham, and I want to ask a question today. Do you really know? And this is what he was asking. Do you really know that if you died tonight, that you'd go to heaven? Do you really know? And that goes for those of you watching by internet and by television. Do you really know? I've been asked that a couple of times. Um, different guys that in the ministry that I do when I'm not here. Um, and I have no doubt and I want to talk about belief this morning and, and tied to faith. But do you believe? And that was the key question that he asked. Do you believe that if you died tonight, you'd be in heaven? Because not only for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, but I know that the day that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior... That my promise was that I'd have everlasting life with him. 
um, we're going to have everlasting life. Now, whether we have everlasting life with him or we have everlasting life in hell, that's what we're going to have. And, and that is a fact. Uh, the Bible says it's given, uh, appointed a man once to die. Now, my personal belief, based on what the Bible says, so let's make sure we say that. Um, I've shared what my dad did uh, last week about if uh, the pastor just believes and not, doesn't base it on the scripture. I personally believe that I'm going to live a long life. Because the Bible says if you honor your father and your mother, I'll satisfy you with long life. Promise. I noticed my mother's here this morning in church. Well, her car is. Anyway. Um, as soon as I drove in, that was the first thing I, I noticed. Um, and realizing that because we may or may not have had belief instilled in us as we're growing up, how do you base your belief if you're, you haven't been raised to believe? Because maybe you didn't have Christian parents. Maybe you had parents that said, well, you know, maybe sometimes. I, I didn't believe, my, my, I don't personally believe everything that... Uh, that was said uh, this morning. I, I, I don't personally believe because the, what the scripture says that um, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, I know what tomorrow is going to bring. God has promised me long life. He's promised me the blessings in life if I listen to him. We look at, uh, uh, let's turn to uh, Psalm 35. And I think it's the fifth verse that I'm looking for. No, Psalm 37, I'm sorry. And I guess whatever I went to, oh, I wound up in Romans. There you go. That works. I think it's Psalm 37 that I'm thinking of, actually. Yes, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. I was raised by a mother, I've shared a lot of, a lot of you don't know my mother very well because my mother didn't talk very much, but I was raised by a mother that we were in a church one time and the pastor says, he'll give you the desires of your heart, that means that he'll change your desires to match his, and she said, no. She didn't say anything very often, but she said, no. That says it'll give me, he'll give me the desires of my heart. Not his heart. My heart. His heart is about you. His heart is about you from the very beginning of the earth when he created Adam and Eve because he knew that Adam and Eve were going to do what they did. So he had already made a plan that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in me shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. And so we get in that place that we re realize that God made a plan for our ending before we were ever even thought of, before we were ever created in the womb. And so when we get in that place, we realize when he, he says what he means. He, di he didn't say, I'll make you to come into my, my way of thinking. He says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. This is what I was looking for. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He shall also bring it to pass. He'll bring forth your righteousness 
as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently on Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way. Because the man who brings wicked schemes to pass ceases from anger, forsake wealth, wrath. Do not fret, only it only causes harm. For evildoers will be cut off. But they who are who wait on the Lord, here we go, they shall inherit the earth. Your inheritance is the good thing from life. Your inheritance are the good things in the earth. Which also brings me to the place to think that that means that we as Christians should dominate the government. We as Christians need to be involved, not just at the voting box, God may want you somewhere else. And God may want you to be involved in such a place that you have influence in there. I remember uh, a guy, and, and I'm going to go on with this, but I, I remember a guy, and, and everybody thought he was a nut. Um, we, my kids were in school, and so I was going to school board meetings, and, uh, and I was an associate pastor in that town. Um, but the pastor of the Jesus only church uh, was a retired highway patrolman um, he's a big guy I mean you, you had to look up at him and uh, the, the and if you got kids in school it's it, that that don't homeschool and I know a lot of us have a homeschool here but uh, you've got to be involved with this because um, sex education's only got worse. But I remember at that time um, was the very first part of the trying to introduce the children to alternative lifestyles. Um, I, I think uh, David was maybe fifth grade or sixth grade, and so that tells you how long ago it was. David's 47 years old now. Um, but I'll never forget, Reverend Bray got up and he said, you'll not teach our children what kind of lifestyle they should believe in. I'll teach the children from the church. And the parents will teach their children from their belief in what the Bible says. And you have no right to say anything. And everybody just thought he was a nut. But I believe that if we're going to build faith and belief in our children, that we're going to be involved with every step that's taken as they're growing up. And I know that, that that's one reason that, that so many have homeschooled. But what about the other children that are growing up? Do we have the right to not be involved because it's his will that none should perish but that all should have everlasting life. So I believe that we should be involved in different aspects of, of government in that place. I don't know who that was for or, or what it was for because that was never part of the message today. I really haven't got to the message yet today. Uh, for a little while the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look for his place carefully. But it shall not; it shall be no more. But the meek. Okay, I think I just did something wrong. No, I didn't. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and the gnashings uh, at him with the, his teeth. The Lord laughs at him. 
So I think about everybody that scoffed at Reverend Bray. Well, I was sitting there, I thought, go on with your bad self, Bubba. Even though he was very forceful in what he said, of course, you know, I mean, I've been a highway patrolman, now he's a pastor, so that tells you where the, where the force came from. But very forceful in what he said, you had no doubt what he believed. And this isn't about him, but it's about what's our place in life. And how am I going to get to that place where I'm going to watch that measure of faith that God has given me become the dominant part of everything that happens in my life and around me and for those who I love, which is this family, my, my personal family, uh, and, and knowing that uh, it, it depends on us what the outcome's going to be. By the way, does anybody know, and, and you know, I've been real careful not to use this, but I'm going to go ahead and use it. Does anybody know what percentage of the people in the United States is the LGBT community? We can see, we, I mean, every, it dominates everything that we do in government. It dominates what decisions are made. Do you know that it's only 9% in the entire United States? Hey, I'm going to tell you this. Christians are way more than 9%. So when we get in that place, we realize, when I say we should dominate the things that are going on, if you look at the percentage of things, we're in the greatest percentage. We should dominate everything that happens. And that's what Psalm 37 here is talking about. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow and cast down the poor and the needy to slay those who are upright in conduct and their sword shall enter their own heart and their bows shall be broken and a little that, and, and a little that is righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, and the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance, and shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine they shall be satisfied." Wow. You think about days of famine. Um, we've, all in, we've all experienced the inflation that's going on, but we've not, in, we've not uh, experienced the recession because of His provision for us. Because in days of famine we'll be satisfied. Another place in Psalms it says his children have never been caught begging bread in the street. But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord like the splendor of the meadows shall vanish. In the smoke they shall vanish away. The wicked bor borrows and does not repay. But the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth. And those cursed by him shall be cut off. And the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. That's not my confession, okay? Yet I have seen the righteous, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. For his, he is ever merciful in lens, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. 
For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, and the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off, and the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom. His tongue talks of justice. The law of the Lord God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will ha not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. And when the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I, see, seen, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading itself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he is no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless men and observe the upright, for the future of that is man, is, man is, in, is peace. But the transgressors, transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall Help him, help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked one and save them because they trust in him. It is good to trust in God. Go to uh, Romans 12.3. Actually, we're going to start in 12.1. 12.3 is where we're going. I want to talk about the measure of faith and belief. I'm going to ask a question. Does your faith grow? I'm going to show you that your faith really doesn't grow. Faith is like a muscle. It has to be worked and it has to be used, but it's not the faith that actually grows, it's the belief. And it's kind of confusing in the thinking, but my opinion is it really doesn't matter which way you think on it, whether it's your faith grows or your belief grows, but I want to show you what the Bible says about your faith. And in Romans 12, starting in 1, I beseech, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you read in the, the uh, original text, it's, it says... Don't be conformed to this world's way of thinking, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. In verse uh, 3, it says, For I say, though grace, the grace, through grace, the, through the grace that has been given to me, every or given to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, to think soberly as God has dealt to each one measure of the measure of faith. So, how much faith has he given you? Enough faith for today. Enough faith for, to believe. Enough faith to... Ask Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Remember it says, uh, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. So if he's dealt to everybody the measure of faith, has everybody had the measure of faith to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? 
The answer is yes. Does everybody believe that Jesus was the Christ and the only Son of God and the only way of salvation? I believe if they really did believe that, they would have done it by now. Now, do some believe it and they're not ready to go ahead and say, Jesus is, gonna, is the Lord of my life? I don't know. I'm, I'm not... I'm not going to make that judgment. I'm going to make the judgment that everybody that says, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he was raised from the dead and he's at the right hand of God is, and he's my Lord and Savior, they're saved. And, they're, and, and you can't take that away from them, no matter what. So let's look at the, the next place it talks about faith. Uh, 2 Corinthians... Uh, 10, and uh, 15. Now this is a place that we base our belief that faith grows. But listen to what he's saying. Let's go back to... Uh, Uh, verse 14. For we're not over uh, extending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you, for it was to you that we first came with the gospel of Christ. 15 says, not boasting of things beyond uh, measure that is that is in other men's labors, but having hope that is in your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere. To preach the gospel in reg regions beyond, uh, and not boasting in another man's sphere of accomplishment. Now, he talked about faith growing there. But how does your faith grow? As we use that measure of faith that God has given us, what happens is our confidence grows or our believing grows in that place. And so as we go, and again, I, I don't want to split hairs. I just want to notice that the Word says that He's given everybody the measure of faith. Not to think more highly of yourselves because you seem to have bigger faith. It just happens to be that we get to a place that as we use that faith, we begin to believe and have more confidence in using that faith. Because if God gave us a measure of faith, what does the Bible tell us that God gives us? Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation and there is no turning aside. That's what it says in James. So if God gave us a measure of faith. Did he give you perfect faith? Answer is yes, he did. He doesn't know how to do anything but give perfect gifts. And so when we get in that place, we re I realize that measure of faith that God has given me was perfect. Now, it's up to me how I use it. And when I use it, does my confidence grow in using it? Hey, the first time I, I've, I've shared a little bit about... Uh, Joe, when the first time that uh, grew a leg out, and um, some of the things I, I realize as I, as I think back over the years, I, I even forget things that have happened. I remember having one lady came and and uh, her uh, shoulders were hurting, and the Lord had me back her up against the wall, and she held her hands out, and, one, and her hands were like this, and and this hand, this arm grew out. I watched it grow out. I had forgot all about that till this morning when I was, when I was praying. Um, but the first time that a blind person came to me, because the Lord told me, He says, you have a, a, a healing service tonight to show them. I, t I was teaching at a Bible school in Taipei, Taiwan. And He says, you have a healing school tonight and show them what you've been teaching, because these people were all going into the underground church in China. 
So if they were going in there, they're going to come in contact with people that have needs. First girl that comes up, um, I, I've shared with you, she had glasses with look like Coke bottle cups or bottoms. And uh, I said, what do you want? She says, I want to receive my sight. I'm blind. And I thought, God, you've got to show up now. And, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm being honest. I mean, you, you're thinking, uh, hey, I've never done this before. But I do believe that God is who he says he is, and he'll do what he says he'll do. He says, you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He said, in, in places, he had told me to, to do, a, actually what he told me not to do a healing service, he said do a miracle service. And so I already knew that the plan tonight was for miracles, and so, God, I'm glad you're going to show up now. Because I haven't been here before. And she walked out of there uh, with her sight, left her Braille Bible on the table. I don't even know how she ever figured out to read, but she left with my Bible. And then another time in Cottonwood, California, a lady came up and she says, uh, now I'm talking about how to use the measure of faith that God's given you. She says, I'm going deaf. And uh, Lord told me, he says, stick your fingers in her ears. I was really glad he didn't tell me to lick them that night. I've, I've shared that with you about in Africa that time. <clears throat> I stuck my fingers in her ears and I spoke to her eardrums to be cleared up and to, uh, uh, to be restored where she could hear. And the next morning she heard the coffee pot r- dripping in the other room. Um, hey, that didn't have anything to do with David. That had to do with the measure of faith that God has given us and, the, and the using it. And then when I talk about faith being like a muscle, as you use it, it causes your belief to grow. I didn't think that time, but God, I hope you show up now, because I'd already seen him take blind eyes and make them see. I knew he could do ears. That was no deal. We've got to realize that as we use that faith and our belief grows to that place. I started with Psalm Psalm 37 this morning, which was not the plan at all. But I felt like that when, when I got up here that the Lord says, do this. Because in order to build our belief system, we've got to commit our way to Him so that we can get, it's not just about me getting the desires of my heart, but it's about me being more believing and activating that faith to the point that I glorify Him and I'm able to do the things that I know that I can do just because I'm His kid. And that's what the deal is. It's not, it's not about being a preacher. It's not about being a pastor. It's not about doing anything that pertains to ministry other than I'm going to do what God instructs me to do as I go along. And in order to do that, I've got to commit my way to Him and, and be able to do that. And the icing on the cake, and everybody knows, Rhonda, do you realize that those cupcakes that, that are left after birthday, first thing I like to do is lick the icing off? Hey, even if the cake's stale, which those cupcakes aren't, even if the cake's stale, the icing's still good. I like the icing. I like to have the desires of my heart. But that's not the cake of the thing. The cake of the thing is doing what God wants us to do. And then we let that belief grow, and we let that belief grow, and we let that belief grow. And pretty soon, <laughs> what do you mean God won't do that? What do you mean I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring? My Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach me the things that he said and tell me of things to come so I can know what's going to go on tomorrow because I commit my way to him and I let the Holy Spirit talk to me. And then we get in that place that we realize, I know, hey God, how do you want me to do this? And then shut up and listen. Because sometimes we talk too much. Sometimes we just keep going, oh God, oh God, oh God. Instead of just being quiet and listening. It's okay to say amen once in a while. I know I'm on track. Um, 
Ephesians chapter 4. Last scripture about faith this morning. Chapter 4, verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I believe one of the things that 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 one means is that if I'm going to come to the measure of the fullness of Christ then I'm going to do the things, what does, uh, I think it's 1512. Uh, says, uh, greater things shall we do than he did. He, what, what he actually said was he said, greater things shall you do because I go to the Father, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So if I'm going to come to the fullness of the measure of Christ, and I read the Gospels, and then I read the book of Acts, and then I look and go, wow, I could do all that? Yep, that's right. We can. Am I going to do all that? Only you know that. Because each one of us has to make a decision in our heart that I'm going to do what God wants me to do. One of the reasons that we do that, and, 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 and let me just say the church as a, as a whole, that doesn't mean us or them, or it means the church as a whole is just satisfied reading the Word, praying, and going about our merry way. When, if we will heal the sick, if we will cleanse the lepers, if we will raise the dead, if we will cast out demons, if we'll do greater works than he does, because I go to the Father that the Father may be glorified in the Son, we'll watch a dying world that's going to hell on their knees going, Oh God, I want to be yours. Because they see everything that God does. See, it's not about me and about what I've done and how I've done it. But it's about Him and how it glorifies Him. And it brings more people into the fold. I didn't get to go into China with the, with the group because I got marked as a uh, missionary. And if I'd have gone into China with them, then the government would have followed all of us. And because I didn't go, they got to go in and go do great things because of what they were. You know, and it was exciting. I, it was a little disappointing to me because I wanted to go with them just because I'd been there and, and instructed them for two weeks on, in both uh, morning and night classes. And, and both groups went. And I heard great things that happened in there. And it had nothing to do with my teaching, but it had to do with the measure of faith that had been given to them that they believed would work. I remember one girl. I'm going to close with this. I, I remember one lady. We were sitting at lunch. She says, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I said, why? She says, well, I have to go to see, and, and, and it's, they, they don't, have, don't have lawyers, they have mediators. I, I have to go see this mediator because um, she ran over somebody in a crosswalk that it ran out in front of her. And, uh, and they did. They literally ran out in front of, which is another story. But um, she says, uh, I'm concerned. I said, why? <coughs> she says, because he worships the idol. He doesn't just worship the idol. He worships the 11 idols. Well, all of the little statues that are Chinese statues that we think are really pretty, they're all an idol. And, and this guy worshipped all, all 11 idols every day. She says he's never lost a case. You know how that affected me, right? I said, I want to pray with you right now. I said, Father, I just thank you right now that... Uh, 
and I don't even remember what her name was, but I, I call her by name, that she's going to win this case that, um, that uh, the idol can't uh, dominate over her. And right now, Satan, I tell you to loose your hands from her, and I laugh at you. Ha! And when I laughed, I heard the whole table go, oh! it was like I had done something wrong. Even though they were all believers, they were afraid to come against the idol because of the culture and the way they'd been they'd living. She came back to school later on that next day. She was, she was late because she'd had to been in that mediation. And, and uh, I said, would you like to tell everybody what happened? I knew what happened even the minute she walked in. She, because I had full confidence that when I prayed with her the day before that she was going to prevail. She came in and she went, I won. The idol lost his first case with that guy. That guy had never lost a case before, but he did that day. And what we have to do is realize that that measure of faith that we've been given is to be able to dominate a world to know that as we dominate this world, I'm not talking about being in the government right now. I'm talking about doing the works that God has called us to do so that we can cause our belief to grow and grow and grow. I'll guarantee you that that girl never believed the idol could prevail against her again. And I say girl, she was probably a lady of about 30 or 35 years old. Sometimes it's hard to look at a uh, Chinese lady and know really how old she is but we come into a place that we realize man this is about somebody else it's not even about me it's about him and it's about them because it's not his will that any should perish but that all should have everlasting life it's an exciting time to be alive I was going to try to put this together today and I decided that uh, probably when I get back from uh, Jacksonville uh, I'll have it in a couple of weeks. Um, they're putting the roof on the Bible school this week in Nigeria. Um, it's been a dream of, of uh, growing this, to start building this Bible school for several years. Um, they started the, the house Yesterday, um, we're building a house f for uh, the overseer to stay right there at the Bible school. And uh, uh, we bought another piece of property this week uh, to be able to uh, uh, build the house on because we didn't want to take any of the Bible school property, which takes up two complete lots, 100 by 100. Um, uh, we drilled a, a, a well there. Uh, a week and a half ago and so they're not buying water they're being able to pump water from our own well to uh, mix the cement and stuff um, I've been excited to see how fast it's gone up and uh, I was told yesterday that they're going to put the roof on it this week so probably by the time I'm able to show the the pictures and the, the videos of it um, the roof will be on and probably they'll be, ha they'll be uh, putting the electricity in Father, we thank you right now for your opportun the opportunity that you give us to live in a country that we're allowed to worship you. Father, thank you for that measure of faith and thank you that as we use it, our belief grows and we grow and we grow and, and we cause more things to happen just because you love us. Father, thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. I hope you've listened to the Word uh, during this service so that you can have your life changed. You're, you'll see how the DNA of your entire life is about to change. Also, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never made Him the Lord of your life. Paul says this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess 
with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's very simple to do that. All I have to really do is say, Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. That's exactly what Paul said. Many times we have people pray a prayer uh, so that we know that we've drawn a line in the sand and we've let everybody know that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So I want to do that with you right now so that you can literally say, today is the day and whatever time it is, wherever you're at watching, you'll know that you've had a change in your life. So say this with me. You can bow your head and close your eyes, or you can keep your eyes open. Uh, and uh, I, I always love what uh, Oop Schroner, who is a prophet of God, said. He said, if you're drowning in a swimming pool at the Holiday Inn, you wouldn't want anybody to close their eyes. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're literally drowning in a swimming pool of sin someplace. So say this with me. Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for me. I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me of them. And Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And I commit today that I will live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, if you just did that, then what you just did is you invited Jesus Christ to live in your life, to be the Lord of your life, and you're going to see a complete change in every area of your entire life right now. If you've watched this broadcast, you also know that uh, what we've talked about at different times uh, through different broadcasts is, is finances. If we, the Bible tells us in Luke 6.38 that if we give, that he'll give back to us, press down, shaken together and running over to make room for more. Then it says, uh, right after that, and this is Luke 6, 38. Then it says, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So if you become a covenant partner with us today, there's many things that we do for outreaches here out of this church and out of the ministry. Not only here in Weatherford, Texas, but all over the country and all over the world. We uh, have rodeo events right here in the arena where we have, uh, he paid your fees. Simply means that nobody pays to, to enter. They come, we have a devotional, it becomes an outreach opportunity. And we do that in rodeo arenas, horse show arenas, and roping arenas all over the United States. We drill wells and have uh, crusades in Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Uganda, and Tanzania. And by doing each one of those, uh, you become, and becoming a covenant partner with this ministry, you become a part of those outreaches. You take part in the reward in the end time, as well as you get back pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. Because you're a covenant partner, and this is good ground. Bible tells us in another place he gives back. Uh, this is in uh, Mark, the 10th chapter. It tells us that he gives back to us some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Well, this ground has been worked. It has is, is been fertilized. And, and I would expect a 100 fold return on that. So there's a uh, website that you've seen. Do two things. One, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, let us know at that website address and we'll send you some information so that you'll be able to walk that walk and succeed in life in your new Christian life. Also, if you give, there's a donate button right there. If you press that donate button and give, that seed gets planted into good ground, and it comes back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. 
Kathleen and I pray every day over every partner of this ministry. So I want to make sure that we're able to pray for you and, and let us know the things that you may have need of in life so that we can bring them before the Father. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Cowboy style of life is just different from, you know, living in a big city and having a suit and tie and, and uh, you know, we're all about Jesus here, but we wear our cowboy hats and our boots. And we have a heart for the youth and college here in Weatherford. We do buck outs and bull rides and team ropings and calf ropings and anything to do with arena events. We have a ride every uh, third Monday night of every month and uh, tonight we're going to just buck some bulls. We're going to have a little word. Uh, the rule is you need to be here by 7 o'clock and then we'd say Jesus paid your fees and, and you get to ride for free. It's just like heaven. If you don't accept Jesus uh, before the gates close, then you don't get in and it's the same thing. We're going to look at uh, Mark, the 10th chapter tonight. Then in the arena, it's simply, uh, it's time to just get real. It was a good rush. Get on the next one. We spend time with the kids. We don't just uh, get here and disciple them and, t and preach at them. We work behind the bucket shoots with them. Other than that, uh, it's, it's church. <laughs>